Hello and welcome back. I am 13 and we're playing another competitive deck tonight. I apologize, but I am so stoked about Stoneforge Mystic that we're going to play a couple of decks that actually do things. Some fun stuff will continue next week, but for tonight we're looking at Abzan Blade. So this is a little stock. Uh, I am playing a couple of fun cards like I usually try to, uh, but we're going to try to make Abzan work. So Abzan was already a mid-range deck and Stoneforge Mystic pretty much fits the exact tune of what this deck wants to do. Stoneforge Mystic, enter, search for an equipment, pay two mana, put it into play. Batter Skull enters, creates a zero, zero, and when Batter Skull is equipped to something, it gets plus plus four, plus four, Vigilance and Lifelink. So you can essentially Stoneforge Mystic, turn two, get a four, four, Lifelink Vigilance creature. You can move it over something that's good. Uh, last night we played with sort of Feast and Famine, and tonight we're gonna play with sort of Fire and Ice. I believe Feast and Famine is technically the better card in Modern, just because it fits the colors a little bit better, but I'm always happy to be proven wrong. We're gonna test out sort of Fire and Ice just to see how it goes. Um, also worth noting that we are playing a discard deck, so I really don't want a sword that incentivizes opponents to discard cards when we already have a Liliana the Vel in play. So this might actually be a better fit for the deck, despite the fact the colors aren't as good of protection in modern. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, again, kind of just testing that, kind of want to see what's going to happen, but my girl Stoneforge Mystic is really going to try to go the distance tonight. We are playing this on the shell of Abzan. It's fairly similar to Jund if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of Liliana of the Vell, Termagoyf, Grimflayer. Uh, Grimflayer allows us to stack our deck at maximum value out of Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls has really good synergy with Liliana of the Vell. Lingering Souls has gone down in value since Plague Engineer hit the format, but... It's still a good card. It still generates a lot of value. So we're only running three tonight. Uh, I'm not sure how to feel about that, but I am a little afraid of Plague Engineer. And then last but not least, this is on the shell of Termagoyf, Path, Fatal Push, Inquisition, and Siege Rhino. For those of you that didn't know Siege Rhino, he basically stomped around standard. He's a four mana, enter the battlefield, drain for three. That eats removal. And if he doesn't eat removal, he's a solid body with trample. So he just does a lot of work. See, Drino is just one of those cards that overperformed. We had the fixing in standard. We definitely have it in modern. I am also moderately afraid of Blood Moon. A lot of people are splashing white these days for Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, they have a little bit of time to slow down, try to grind it out. So Blood Moon might be a problem. But yeah, we're going to try to run that out. And we are on Abzan Stoneblade tonight, playing with some powerful cards. But. We got our first matchup. I need to correct the record. Boom. And right off the bat, we get kind of a slow start. Uh, with any deck with this format, you're basically looking for discard on one. So we're going to go ahead and ship that. Oh boy. Well, opponent's also on the mold of six, but we're going to five. Yeah, that's not great. Opponent kept, and this is actually okay. So we will keep, ship back the Field of Ruin and probably the Plague Engineer. It's the worst in a vacuum in this situation, and I actually want the third land for Lingering Souls. Watch it be Tron. We gave up our Field of Ruin. Ah! <laughs> Sometimes I think I might be psychic. Uh, Blooming Marsh is going to enter on tap next turn. Uh, I don't like any of this. Well, the Grim Flare is going to put up a decent clock, so may as well get our White Source out. And uh, Actually, that was a mistake. It's minimal, but using the Marsh Flats would have shuffled and put one of our Field of Ruins back into our deck to a point that we could draw it. But it is on a little bit of a slower start, so they're not going to have Tron right away. Yep, they found a mine, so they have Tron set up for turn four. Okay, well, without a doubt, running out Grim Flayer. Grim Flayer has the opportunity to start sculpting our hand and actually putting forth a decent clock. So opponent should spend next turn trying to assemble Tron, which means we can hopefully pull out their threat and actually set up for a win. Pause to read Grim Flayer. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of your library, put any number into the graveyard and the rest on the top of your library in any order. Standard players probably know this is Surveil. And then Delirium is if we have four more different card types in our yard, he gets plus two, plus two. So, 
Shambling vent. Alright, well, we're just going to Thought Seize. Hopefully take their only bomb. Okay. Well, it's going to be Karn. But that's not an overly scary hand. Uh, path is terrible, so we can bend that. The Scoos is pretty bad. But it's also a threat. So we currently have Sorcery, Instant, whatever, Land, and Creature. Let's make our Grim Flare a 4-4. Four, four. Opponent's going to have Tron and Oblivion Stone. There's the tower. Yep, Wutron. Uh, this mine was actually what they revealed with the Ancient Stirrings. Brad, well, I don't think you were here for mulligans, but I ended up tucking a Field of Ruin. Okay, well that path would have been nice. Yay for ripping a Worm Coil. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to cash in Lily and Grimflayer just to make contact with them. That feels awful. Overgrown Tomb is going to be our most used color. Actually, they still haven't cast the... We're just going to make them discard. So, what I could have done there was Edict the Worm Coil, attacked in with Grim Flare. It'd get blocked by both the Lifelink and the Death Toucher. Opponent would gain three life, kill my Grim Flare. If they only blocked with the Death Toucher, I could trample over and surveil three, but I don't really think that's relevant. Now opponent's going to have to make the decision here if they want to attack Lily, attack me, cast the Oblivion Stone, cash it out, basically get the two Worm Halves. Going after Lily. Uh, yeah, we'll block. The Slingering Souls will be able to block Worm Coil for a while. And the Blast Zone's going to have to get ticked up for Lily if that's the direction that they want to go. Did they seriously top deck another Worm Coil? Or is this just the O Stone? All right. I do not know what's in an opponent's hand at this point. So, pretty easy. Empty the hand here. Wow, I cannot click colors correctly. There's a Grim Flare. Discard opponent's last card. There's a Sylvan Scrying. Flashback to Lingering Souls. Now this Oblivion Stone can get a decent amount of value, but... They're kind of forced into popping it if they want to deal with our board state. I mean, honestly, this matchup's going to be just about as rough as it, as it is for Tron, except we don't get Alpine Moon. Uh, Fulminator didn't really make the cut for the sideboard. Like, this is just going to be rough. Tron is king of the format now that everybody's trying to go mid range. Yep, yep, yep.
Didn't even think twice about it. Uh, probably could have been a reason to hang on to the Lingering Souls, but honestly, it's not very relevant. We need to find a path here, otherwise we're pretty much just scooping it up. Yeah, we're not going to win this battle. Yes, I could edict them. Yes, we could figure some stuff out, but it's not like it really matters. Surgical comes in so that we can try to take them off their lands. Dampening Sphere comes in. Fracturing Gust is a consideration. Not a huge fan of it, but it is a consideration. Let's see what we're cutting. Lingering Souls is slow. Uh, Liliana, Last Hope doesn't actually do much for us. Plague Engineer doesn't do much for us. We're basically looking for things with a fast clock. Push is bad. Uh, path is okay. I'm not sure if opponent's going to stay on the Worm Coil plan because we're Abzan. For Jun, they always bring them in, but for us, we can actually exile, so I don't know. That That's slightly rough. Uh, tireless Tracker is going to be a decent clock. The Fracturing Gust is fine, but seeing as how we have four artifacts, that it's basically going to be this versus this. This is in here for Urza. And potentially hardened scales. Uh, Pulse is definitely coming in. So, what would I rather have? A Plague Engineer, or Lily Last Hope, or the Fracturing Gust? All right. Seeing as how we had our colors, I probably should have just kept the Field of Ruin. But that's results bias. That's not a, how you should actually think about things. This is fine. I'd love to find another land, but we have our turn one play or turn two play. It's a clock. No field of ruin, no surgical, but this is how we try to get things done. Inquisition. Oh boy. So the Sylvan Scrying is going to be the thing that gets them the most. We don't have another discard, so... I'll leave them with the cantrips and just make sure that they can't tutor whatever piece they don't draw into. There could probably be an argument there. Now, I'd need a Cabal Therapy or something to take all of the one cantrip. Ugh. All right, well... That does make things a little bit easier. That means I get a Grim Flare and then put out a Damping Sphere. Here comes mine. That pause is not good. I think that means that they might have potentially found a Sylvan Scrying. Either that or a real life distraction, but typically a pause here when, yep. All right, well, you play Tron because you want to get lucky. Let's smack opponent around a bit, figure out what we're looking at. Inquisition doesn't really do anything anymore. We are not very close to... I want one of these lands. I think I'd prefer the fetch land. Result being that I'm probably going to try to multi. And then I won't be able to multicast because of the damping sphere. So I think that I'd prefer to just be able to not pay life. I have plenty of gas here, and the fetch lane can get additional clues. So let's spin that and put this on top. Then Marsh Flats, Damping Sphere, so their Tron can't go off. And see if they happen to luck their way into a Nature's Claim. Never didn't have it.
Cracky, cracky. No, so they're actually trying to run out the other one. If anybody would be used to damping sphere math, I'd assume it'd be the Tron opponents. Yep. Ooh, Pulse would be funny just because that's not the star. That'd make it so that they just get destroyed. Uh, I need another green source. The rest really doesn't matter. We use these colors more often. Oh, yeah, fetching doesn't work if you stack your deck with Grim Flare. Uh, I have land sorcery, so I think this means I just smack opponent with Grim Flare again. Hey, look at that. Field of Ruin and Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, so definitely want Field of Ruin on the top. I'm not really sure how I feel about the Maelstrom Pulse, so I think I'm going to give myself the option to bend that in the future. I do not need the Overgrown Tomb, so that can go into the Graveyard. Then Maelstrom Pulse, and then Field of Ruin on the tip top. Tireless Tracker gets a little bit better value here. And its opponents go. So if they find their nature's claim, they blow up my damping sphere and run out worm coil. I still have a pretty decent line of pulse with path. But it looks like they're a little bit on the light side there. Find me something decent. Oh, there's an Assassin's Trophy. All right, well, I'm set on creatures. I'm still not sure how to feel about this Maelstrom Pulse. We can keep floating it. So we can put that on top and the Assassin's Trophy in case I need to blow it. That gives me the line of cracking the clue and then trophying. But we came here to Siege Rhino. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Of note, if I Assassin's Trophy next turn, this is also... Actually, this is just lethal. So... Assassin's Trophy would have put an instant in the bend growing the Grim Flare, but we drained through with the Siege Rhino, so it's lethal anyways. Opponent found a Thrag Tusk. That keeps him around. So I can path the Thrag Tusk, but that means that the Tireless Tracker can't get in. Both of these have trample, so I'm okay to move to blocks. I think the plan here is just attacking with these two guys and hit them for nine. Yay, trample! Then I'm going to try to stack this so I get a land on top. I can crack the clue, play my land for turn, and still be able to Assassin's Trophy on their turn. I guess it's eight. He has more toughness. All right, then I really don't need the Pulse anymore. I kind of don't need the Assassin's Trophy. I'm fairly stocked, and I'm going to be able to play it this turn. So, eh, whatever, we'll float it. So we want the Assassin's Trophy and then the Goblet Shrine. We're going to crack the clue. Shock this into play. Ship it on over to opponent, and it's going to be really hard for them to figure out how to get out of this. They do get to play the Worm Coil this turn. They actually might be able to Karn here. All 
All right. And I can crack the clue, but I'm doing this because of the damping sphere so I don't get taxed more. Then I'll draw the Assassin's Trophy, trophy the Life Linker, and then I should be able to kill the opponent here. Because at least one of my creatures is getting in unblocked, and the other one has trample. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm safe here, but I'll just grow the tireless tracker. Yep, they did. All right, does anything change here? Don't believe so. I really like Lily Rebuy Sea Drino, but it's probably not good enough. I think we just need to apply a clock and go for it. Bonus points for Field of Ruin Surgical. Matchup doesn't get much worse than Tron, though. It eats mid-range. We don't get Blood Moon. We don't get Alpine Moon. Veil of Summer has pushed Fulminator out of the format as best removal. Jund is even moving towards um, Stone Rain, just because it's not black. And this hand doesn't do anything. This hand does stuff. It's not great, but it does stuff. So this is a thought seize. And then if opponent's going to set up turn three Tron, we can Damping Sphere. If they're not, we can Goif. Uh, this does mean that my Mulligan is shipping back the Sword of Fire Knives. It just isn't relevant, relevant enough here, and it costs five mana to deploy. Opponent's currently at four cards, and we have a thought seize. Three cards. Might be a concession. I mean, it's possible that three cards are just Tron lands and they top deck Karn on the third turn. Do I want to pay two life to <laughs> check what they got? Probably. Oh, I even get Stoneforge on two now? It must be my birthday. Overgrown Tomb, so I have green for the scavenging news. Ancient Stirrings. Good enough for me. And not a land. Goyf is currently a 2-3. It's not going to get much better, so may as well Stoneforge Mystic. We cast her. It only took the third game. Opponent found a blast zone. Windswept Heath is good. I probably shouldn't F6 in case opponent has dismember. It's not likely, but it's not impossible. Batter Skull comes in. Filter into blue. <laughs> Stifle would be hilarious, but now this is a nature's claim. Yep. Rips. Funny enough, I did actually make the germ there, so germ came in and died. Godly Shrine. That's pretty good. So, again, opponent could have Dismember. I honestly don't think that's very likely, so I'm just going to run out my hand. Goyf is the biggest attacker. Scooze is the biggest threat. Opponent's not close to Tron, so I really don't want to show the Damping Sphere yet. But 
opponent currently is on a three turn clock, not including this turn. Hopefully grow that a bit with the goif. Opponents found a sphere. Wow, I've done some damage to myself. Opponent even made us gain life. Uh, so opponent could potentially have an Oblivion Stone. They get to crack the Expedition map, but they're not assembling Tron this turn. So I'm just going to run out the other Scoos and just try to close the clock. So they're currently taking 9 damage. I can't grow it at all. Either way, the Damping Sphere feels a little safer in hand at the moment. Plus, for all I know, I'm going to draw the Sword of Fire and Ice and just run it out and be happy. I guess that would have been a reason to Damping Sphere, so Sword of Fire and Ice is lethal next turn. Cantrip, try to find the Sylvan Scrying. I did find a land, but it wasn't a Tron piece, and they scoop it up. All right, well, took game one versus Tron. Honestly, did not expect that. That match is pretty abysmal. Jund is a 30-70 matchup, and Abzan's probably closer to a 20-80 matchup, just because they don't have a fast enough clock. Lingering Souls does not make up for the fact that you get a little bit more reach. Uh, and this is a mulligan. I do have discard on one. I technically have a turn two play, but I don't like the odds of this. Oh, we can discard two turns in a row. Whatever, we'll give this a shot. I've seen Brad want to keep these hands. This must be correct. Not having green is a little upsetting. Rub it in, opponent. Rub it in. That's fine. Okay, so this is basically going to be a check for Utopia Sprawl. Nykthos and Karn. So some variant of Green Devotion. All right, well, their Devotion count isn't very high at the moment, so I'm going to Grim Flare so I can set up my future draws. I'm expecting opponent to not have much removal. Actually, that may have been correct because Lily can kill the Arbor Elf next turn. And the land drop means Karn's coming out. Oh well. Of note, I can actually path their creature and thought sees Liliana or Grimflayer and actually get Delirium and just kill Karn. But the correct play there probably should have just been Thoughtseize, hold up path. Picks up a Walking Blista. Okay, well, Thoughtseize now takes care of the Walking Blista, which gives me Delirium. Primal Command. So this is the Mono Green Control list. <sighs> yeah, I have to get the Walking Blista for Delirium. Path this. That puts an instant in the bin. Uh, why is that not delirium? Oh, because that's be my yard. I'm an idiot. Wow, it's drugs. Okay, attack Karn. Primal command can hit my land. Oh boy. Opponent's likely running out the Walking Ballista, though. No, they're okay with Karn dying? There are punts here. There are a lot of punts here. Yeah, 
Yep, they hit my land. Honestly, kind of okay. When I got acidic slime. Kill the Karn. Grimflare V2. Then, if it really does come down to it, because they're going to acidic slime and try to hit my land here, then I can just thought seize away the Liliana, get eight power, and start stacking my lands. Overgrowth gives them three mana off of that. Ouch. Okay. Well, apparently it was F6, so I don't get multiple triggers of this, but put in Graveyard, put in Graveyard. Turn off Auto Yields. Put that on top, play our land. And Thought sees away the Walking Ballista. Life total starting to hurt. Wait, what happened to Walking Ballista? Oh, I Thought seized it before. Oh my gosh, my head is so not here. Well, we have Delirium now, thanks to Grim Flayer dying. Opponent currently has no action, though, unless they top-decked it. We should be drawing a land for turn. Yep. Kill you. So I'm going to crack now so that I can actually stack my deck and not have to shuffle. Uh, my life total is getting kind of dangerously low, so I'm going for my green source. Get to Lily. I'm going to buy back Grim Flare. Or do I want Skews? I don't have the lands to activate Skews, so we'll buy back Grim Flare. And opponent is currently on no action, so whatever, I'm not going to surveil. Let's just get rid of Garrick. A walking Ballista is going to be super bad. We might just die. That's 8, 9, 10 mana. Not yet, but it's close. Ooh, I like that. Of note, we should have surveilled three more times and... Also hit opponent for two damage, but do what we can. Opponent's thinning. Also getting blue mana. That might be relevant. This must be the into the real deck. No, it's it's got to be the mono green devotion. Opponent is flooding out kind of hard here. Okay, putting opponent to two. Ben. I kind of want to keep Batter Skull in the deck. Whatever, I'll draw it. I have not kept my head together this game at all. The struggles. Should be close to impossible for opponent to win here. Yep, they need Primal Command with some other shenanigans. I didn't even activate Lily at the end there. Okay, opponent is trying to destroy our stuff with Mono Green and Artifact things. Vell of Summer doesn't really matter. Tireless Tracker could be interesting if we're on the land plan. Sorry, I had to cough. Uh, Collective Brutality is actually pretty good to kill Arbor Elf as well as take out Primal Commands. That might be a loose use of the dress mode. I don't know, let's see what we're working with. I still love Sword of Fire and Ice. If we get it going, it's great. Plague Engineer can name Elf. Siege Rhino's fine. Pathing our own creatures a possibility. Pushing Arbor Elf is how we win these games. 
Scoos might be bad just because it costs so mana, much mana to activate. They should have Ewit somewhere in their list, but it's likely only a single copy that they can grab with Primal Command. So not overly excited about the Graveyard Hate there. Surgical Extraction could technically work on like a specific piece, but they're going to have a lot of redundant pieces that do that. Maelstrom Pulse for Karn's probably a consideration. There are so many cards that I want. Maybe just trim on the Lingering Souls. They're slow, and I need to find a way to get them into the yard. Opponent might be bringing in Graveyard Hate. Damping Sphere could technically come in for Nykthos. It doesn't work for things like Overgrowth. So Overgrowth is whenever land is tapped for mana, its controller adds additional. That's an Overgrowth effect, not a effect of the land. Fracturing Gust can get rid of their land things. Yeah, no, that seems great. Whatever, let's just keep a scoos. Single scoos. Super scientific for the fringe deck. Uh, we are on the draw, which means that opponent will probably be destroying lands before this Plague Engineer does anything. This deck thrives on discard, so this is going to be a shit back. It looks playable, but it's not good. Not good at all. I also wouldn't put it past opponent to be on like an early Karn. Okay, this is fine. We get a push on one, Goyf on two, Lily on three. So even if they start destroying our lands, Goyf should be live and we have removal. We can tuck probably the path. I don't want to be ramping opponent and odds are the push should be good enough. If not, Lily should start kicking in. I want the three mana so I can actually cast Lily, as well as the fact that they're trying to destroy land, so I'm not chipping any back. Okay. Uh, on the off chance that opponent doesn't drop a creature, I guess that means I'm leading on the fetch land. This is also covered versus some really early land destruction. They just can't target a fetch land. Hi, Arbor Elf. And I don't really have Scoos left in the deck. I'm just going to get a Swamp. More lands are fine. We got Beefy Goyf. All right, is this a Lily or is this a Stoneforge Mystic? This is probably Lily because it's going to be one, something a little harder to interact with. Stoneforge Mystic. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Let's attack first. Assassin's Trophy also hits their land, which is awesome. I do need to get a white source here, so it's going to be white green. There's Lily, no Shrinky Dinks. Get that value. All right, Acid Moss, destroy a land ramp. Decent card, but I've got pressure. Thoughtseize, fantastic. This is gonna cost a lot of life. Oh, opponent's got nothing going on. Uh, I'm going to blind minus here. Try to grow the goif. Yeah, that's fine. Get in. And let's commit to the board. Opponent's got nothing. Oh, I milled the batter skull? Okay. Note to self 13. Don't do that in the future. That, that was a bad decision. That was a very bad decision. Siege Rhino. So what might have technically been the correct play there was to hold up the Stoneforge and Assassin's Trophy, but this puts opponent dead to just the Goyf next turn. So I don't necessarily need to put the sword into play. It's fine to draw it out of the deck, but it's not like it does anything that relevant. 
Yep, you get hornets, so they'll start ticking them away. This line is a little weak to Ewit, just because they can pick it up and replay it. But... Hmm, didn't hit a land, so Seed Rhino's not lethal. I don't really have Trample. Hmm. That is actually awkward. So... I can drain for two and then just try to top deck a land. Opponent's on top deck, so I really don't think it's that relevant. Okay, what we're going to do is attack with Stoneforge Mystic. Odds are they're going to block it. Yep, that gets rid of an insect. Then this makes it so that opponent is dead to a land or a removal spell. I think that's the best I can do. Or Lily. Yeah, Lily would have done it too. GG's opponent. Move up to 2-1. Taking out Tron and Land Destruction. So, Rocky Little Lab Jam Blade tonight. Uh, I guess you could technically call the Siege Rhinos a fun of. We ended up trimming a Lingering Souls just because I'm afraid of Plague Engineer. It's been making a splash everywhere, and Mardu's actually been a real deck despite Faithless Leading getting banned. Uh, young or Seasoned Pyromancer is still really good. Unearth is very good synergy with it. Uh, running a couple of the scooses. We did trim on two goifs and so that we could have three Grim Flayers. But that's just because I like the synergy with the deck. Oh, we're on the play. There's Inquisition into Goyf and then some awkward cards. Like, I'd prefer you be Liliana of the Vell and probably just another land, but... Eh, this is fine. Inquisition should put opponent off their game plan enough that this is acceptable. All right, opponent. He basically just showed you what we are. Show me what you got. Force of Negation, Jace, and Sword of Feast and Famine. Well, Feast and Famine is actually protection from our colors, and we have all creatures at the moment, so... Bye, sword. Fatal Push can deal with the Stoneforge Mystic that's coming. I do need to fix my colors here, so taking some damage. Uh, I covered it when I was doing the deck tech, but we are running sort of Fire and Ice over Feast and Famine. I think Feast and Famine is a better representation of the colors in Modern. But Sword of Fire and Ice will draw cards, and we are technically a discard deck. So I figured that was a little bit better synergy here. Ugh. All right, well, we've got to kill this so that they don't put the Batter Skull in. We know about some of these cards. Let's actually fix that. Cast the Island. But seeing as how we have discard and Liliana's, I didn't want the additional discard effect in this stack. I actually wanted the card draw to try to draw into more threats. So trying out Fire and Ice here. That's just my initial impression. It hasn't really been proven yet. People are still testing Stoneforge. All right, so likely looking at Jace from the opponent next turn. Ooh, this will actually force their hand on the Force of Negation and hopefully exile the Jace. Path. You got it. Guess just get a Swamp. Then next turn I get a Siege Rhino. Exile Jace. Oh, they didn't exile Jace. Uh, I didn't see any black from them, so I don't think Lingering Souls is a concern. Uh, Vendillion Click might be, Snapcaster might be, but I don't think Plague Engineer really has a home. And Cedreno has Enter the Battlefield effects, so let's do that. Kind of expecting a Detention Sphere here, if it's not just Slam Jace. Yep. Jace, do you want to bounce my Cedreno? Oh, 
Colonnade is two lands away from attacking. I know opponent has a Hollowed Fountain. Well, they're brainstorming now. I should assume that they have a Hollowed Fountain. They are probably going to try to tuck the Batter Skull, though. Look at that. That's a fantastic card versus control. Opponent discard a Flooded Strand. See you, Drano. <laughs> We've cast so many Sea Dranos tonight. I'm having a fantastic time. <laughs> I think a land is probably our best top deck, so we can just slam land, Sea Drano 2, and plus Lily. This Jace is making it so that they're drawing cards as well as card selection. So our Liliana is kind of hurting us more than opponent at this point, but she is putting some work in. If she gets to the point that she can ult and stay alive, that's how we're probably just going to straight up win this game. Opponent did draw a card off of their Brainstorm, though, so they haven't gotten much deeper than they already knew about. Okay, so Stoneforge Mystic, Retutor the Batter Skull. That did shuffle for them, but they did it before they Brainstormed. So either that's a little bit of sloppy sequencing or they liked their cards. Deputy on Liliana makes sense. <laughs> uh, we're going to drain for six with these siege rhinos. Uh, Batter Skull does not win versus siege rhino, but it will gain them life, which is kind of a problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and siege rhino again. Missing land drops here is kind of bad, but I mean, we're still draining for three. Batter Skull still won't be able to attack this turn. Opponent does have enough mana that they could just bounce Batter Skull and replay it. Liliana, buyback, Plague Engineer, Lily Plus can kill Stoneforge, but that's slow. Celestial Colonnade will be attacking next turn. We're in Catacombs. So, Lily and Lingering Souls. Lily will get Force of Negation. Uh, if I attack in with Seedrena, they're just going to put the Batter Skull into play. Well, first things first. I think I have to attack Jace down to one. Hitting the opponent for one doesn't really change the clock drastically. But Jace will make it so that they don't get two bounces. And honestly, this just repeatable source of card draw is going to be a problem long term. Yep, yep. You gain four. I can't do much about that. Wait. Oh, why do I keep thinking Siege Rhino is five power? I'm bad at this game. Let's just go get a basic forest. And I'm going to run out Lily Buyback Plague Engineer. It's probably not correct, but I'm running out of some options here. And if opponent wants to cash in attacking with that to take out a spirit token, that's probably fine. Ooh, that's interesting. That's actually super good. No, I'm taking scavenging news all day. Scavenging news can just keep growing. 
Lingering Souls gives me some blockers as well as attackers. And then opponent should likely be bouncing the batter skull. If I was opponent and I had their current hand, it's either going to be snap path or it's going to be... <laughs> I, guess that, I guess that's actually something that can happen. So Stoneforge won't be able to... Eh, they can use Stoneforge to block with, but they won't be able to put another germ out to block for Jace. Trying to put up a fight here. My own batter skull or sort of fire and ice would be nice. So rip a stone forge off the top. Land would also be okay, just means that we can double spell. Although that leaves me open to board clears. Opponent is a mid range deck, they shouldn't be running board clears, but it does open me to board clears. Oh, no, I was running Cobblade, and I had a Settle in the main board, a Wrath, and a Supreme in the side. They're good cards. There's no reason not to be running them. All right, so it looks like opponent's willing to block with Celestial Colonnade, or they have a path available to them. First things first, combat. I need to kill this Jace. I just keep slipping out of control in this game. Yep. Running out scavenging news first wouldn't have done anything there. Siege Rhino! Opponent pauses and they're like, this again? <laughs> Thought I just dealt with this. I mean, they get, get back on the Batter Skull plan next turn, so they're not really allowed to complain. Uh, I am at 21, so may as well take the shock. Right out Scoos. Opponents looking, so they either have a mana leak or a spell snare. Yep. Kind of running out of options here. The nice thing is we go post board, we get a ton of tireless trackers, Vel of Summers. We we have cards to play with, but they're gonna outvalue us here just because they've had an active Jace for several turns. See, Drano does work, but so does Jace. Uh, an Assassin's Trophy would get back our Liliana of the Vel. Opponent's been taking for a while, given the fact that we're tapped out with no cards in hand. Nothing in the Graveyard of Merit. Oh ho ho ho. They didn't even bother bouncing. They just put it on Snappy Boy. Yep, so I basically need a Fatal Push. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Opponent's been tanking on some fairly easy plays, so may as well just move on. We have Tireless Trackers. We have Maelstrom Pulse for Planeswalkers. We have Collected Brutalities to kill small creatures and duress counter spells. Uh, what do we not want here? Plague Engineer's probably slightly awkward. Again, we can name Human or Core, but it doesn't do a whole lot. The Lingering Souls are very good. The Lily the Last Hope, not so much, although buying stuff back and still having a responsible threat is quite good. 
Uh, basically, anything with a clock is fine. The paths are worse than the pushes, and we don't need a ton of removal. Plus, we're bringing in brutalities to replace the paths, so that's all fine. Uh, this reads counter target blue spell draw card. It's basically cryptic mana for one. It's basically cryptic command for one mana. The discard's fantastic. Um, wow, I, I really don't want to cut anything. I can potentially look at the Stoneforge package. They must have realized that we are a Stoneforge deck and might be bringing in cards for that. We could just go full on Jundam out strategy. That would probably mean leaving a path in for the Stoneforge package. So many of our cards are decent in this matchup. Uh, anything that can also be spell snared is probably a consideration. Eh. I honestly think it's just this package. So many of these are bad. The Sword of Fire and Ice is relevant against half their deck, but none of the removal. Late Grain Souls could be a consideration. They're on Snapcaster, which means they're likely on Surgical. Don't think they would bring it in against us, but it is a possibility. Oh, the Avel is probably the best card in the deck. I don't know, maybe just leaving the Sword of Fire and Ice to suit up a Lingering Soul. Uh, this doesn't feel good, but I think it's our config. We will play first. We have Inquisition, Inquisition, Assassin's Trophy, No Clock, and a Painland. Eh, this is slightly better. We will talk Scoos. It's better late game. Show me what you got. Sword of Feast and Famine, Stoneforge Mystic, Snapcaster Cryptic. Well, we're taking the sword again. Just so hard for our deck to interact with. Colonnade down. This has to get me a white source as well as a green source, so we're actually going Temple Garden. That feels awkward. Grimflea! So, expecting Stoneforge Mystic here? I could also see Snapcaster try to ambush Viper the Grim Flayer. But that's opponent betting I don't have removal. Opponent also very well could have drawn into Path to Exile. I mean, this is a target you have to path. I get a Surveil, I get pseudo card advantage by pitching disc graveyard cards. All right, decided to try for the Snapcaster path. Okay. Well, I still get the Trample Surveil, so totally offering this exchange. Yep. This was a one for one with a Surveil three. Oh, look at that. Putting to the graveyard. Uh, opponent doesn't actually have a threat I care about. I also don't have removal. So what I'm going to do is put the Tireless Tracker on top because I'm going to cast Tireless Tracker this turn. Then I can Tireless Tracker with the Verdant Catacombs. If I need the Assassin's Trophy the following turn, I can use it. If not, then I can shuffle it away. So let's do that. Okay, and opponent should have a field of rune here. They found a scalding tarn. All right, well, potentially four clues is pretty good. Although, if opponent's on the batter skull plan, I probably need to leave that assassin's trophy, which means that this. And catacombs is going to go uncracked. If 
if opponent has been reading the game log, they should know I have a card on top I care about. Okay. Uh, so opponent has a cryptic command, which means I need to make them commit into the Stoneforge Mystic. And then I suppose we just check to see if they've got the Spell Snare, potentially Mana Leak. Do you got it? Force of Negation. All right. Exiling to Fairy. That's a fairly fair exchange. So they're going to gain the four life from the other tireless tracker. So this is going to be damage neutral. I got the batter skull out of their hand and got rid of a counter spell and a Teferi. If this is just suit up Stoneforge Mystic, there might be a problem. No, nope. Jace. This opponent really likes the bounce. I mean, it's work for them, but I usually don't get my creatures bounced by Jace this much. <laughs> I found another tireless tracker. All right. Um, I'm going to try to find my land. That's ah, not a land. So opponent has a cryptic command. All right, Lingering Souls it is. No, an opponent had Cryptic Command. There also could have been an argument to Tireless Tracker there, but I'd prefer to Tireless Tracker when I know I'm going to get a clue out of it so I can try to stay ahead in this race. Drawing a card there to try to find a land was probably my best out for just getting any Lingering Souls in the bed, make... Surgical Extraction, worse against me. Actually make my land drop since I want a multi-spell. I want to multi-spell really badly. But if opponent doesn't find a flyer or a land, a land would allow them to activate Colonnade. My spirit should be able to kill Jace here. I can Duress to see what they actually decide, or I can Inquisition to see what they wanted to do with the Brainstorm. All right, first things first, show me what you got. No shenanigans here. I want to see if the way is clear. Opponent is seriously considering tap down counter. That's actually kind of impressive. Snapcaster for force of negation. Okay. I suppose that makes sense. So killing this Jace isn't super beneficial for me, but it's still the best line that I've got. I can Lingering Souls, or I can... Yeah, whatever. So what's going to happen here is I'm just going to kill this Jace, so opponent has to commit mana into their next Jace. Then run out the Lily and eat the Snapcaster Mage. Derp, they didn't use that on my Inquisition. All right, well, that was a punt. They get a suit up the Snapcaster Mage, hit me for seven. Or just run out Jace. 
I actually think suiting up Snapcaster is their best line here. They know I'm tapped out, and that puts me kind of in the danger zone. But they'll do what they want to do. I am finally out of needing to use this nurturing peatland, though. Yep, you got it. Man, I could have played around that last turn so hard. All right, let's hit Jace. And I'm just going to double cast this Lingering Souls. If they have the Detention Sphere coming, they have it coming, but they get the win. This just buys me the most time and actually puts opponent under a real clock. Detention Sphere should at most be a 2 in their 75, so it's kind of taking the odds that it's very minimal that they actually have it. They have been able to filter to it, but... Spirit should buy me enough time to start rebuilding with the trackers. Yep, they have it. Oh, boy. The Lily Last Hope was a punt that probably ended the game. Oh yeah, they had the colonnade. It's over. I would have had to have cracked this to look for my last lingering souls. Yep, blue white gets to take it. Uh, partially my fault. I will own up to that. I didn't realize that opponent had set up for the force of negation without intent to actually cast it. But you live and you learn. Abs and Stoneblade so far doing all right. We did take down the Menace Tron as well as Mono Green Control, which is the land destruction deck. We've put up some decent results. Uh, Jace has been active for a couple of turns too many. I think the one thing to note there is I probably want a Phyrexian Revoker or potentially a Pithing Needle in the side. Uh, potentially just more Assassin's Trophies. The grindier that these matchups are getting post-ban have incentive to get planeswalkers off the table as fast as possible and it really doesn't matter how you do that but we saw there where opponent just had a jace and i didn't really have a way to answer it so he spun out of control and won the game for them he even had tireless trackers but was a little light on mana so just couldn't get there but we're moving to a new game and let's see what we're playing against Opponent has the Birds of Paradise icon everybody starts with. And it did take like 25 seconds to join in. This is painful, but it has everything I want in my opening hand. It has discard, it has a stone forge, it has removal, and it also has a planeswalker. So we have three draws to see a land for this Liliana. I mean, push your discard on one. You just can't beat it. Just wish it wasn't off a of pain land. And I'm guessing opponent is going to be very slow. They must be double queued or something. All right. Uh, assuming Stoneforge is going away here. At some point today. I mean, maybe as well. Oh, it's a grave crawler. Is this an attempt to make Hogak work? <laughs> Awkwardly enough, I don't have the mana to cast that. Okay, if this is Orzhov Zombies, actually, it'd probably be Jun Abzan Zombies. This Thoughtseize is really bad. Okay, so this is some attempt at the zombie deck. Uh, the Venge Vines are slightly awkward. The Carrion Feeder is going to be most of the gas to recast. 
but the undead auger is how they actually get their card advantage. Seeing as how they can cast the undead auger next turn and repeatedly draw cards, I think that's the card I'm going for. I can always push the carrion feeder with the trigger to sack this on the stack so they won't be able to recast it. And they top deck a Stitcher Supplier. Finding nothing of merit. Here's a Carrion Feeder. Okay, so knowing what I know, I'm probably... Uh, this Assassin's Trophy will ramp me. Yeah, let's see if they actually take the bait and try to Assassin's Trophy the Stoneforge Mystic. If they do, that gets me Lily, and I can just start chipping away at their creatures. If not, I'll have a 4-4 lifelink against the aggro deck. They also have to find a land. I suppose that's relevant. Yep, no blocks. Not gonna let you eat my stone forge for free. No, my one weakness, discard. <laughs> we do have perfect information at this point, though, except for anything that the Stitcher Supplier flips. Opponent went for the Batter Skull. Okay. Temple Garden. So, still don't have double black. <laughs> and everything in my hand is black. So, that means I'm going to eat the Carrion Feeder at some point in time. Opponent still doesn't have Assassin's Trophy mana. Alright, we're blocking and pushing. Very, very painful hand. This Assassin's Trophy really isn't doing much at this point. If I draw another Swamp, I'll be sad I didn't Inquisition it out so I can Liliana, but... Gotta do what we can. Okay, opponent did find another land here. Hmm. I don't know... Like. We have perfect information. This is kind of a weird attack because opponent knows that what's going to happen is I'm going to fatal push the carrion feeder, block the grave crawler, then they can recast the grave crawler, but that doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. They will get their vengevine back. They're going to have to leave this in the yard to try to get vengevine. Yeah, I, I don't know what opponent's doing. Hey, look at that. Life is a massive consideration at this point. I'm just going to get my basic Swamp and Seed Rhino because it can block Carrion Feeder. Then next turn can Inquisition away the Assassin's Trophy after I've padded my life a little bit from this. Unless they actually want to kill Seed Rhino. I mean, that's fine. Maybe the correct play was Inquisition Lily? No, I don't have the additional black for that. Opponent's deciding if it's worth trophying. This stonewalls most of your deck. I'd assume that it's a decent consideration. I think opponent also knows our hand, though, from that thought, Suze. We have black mana, guys. We did it. Look at that, we even got the Marsh Flats. All right, let's take a look at what you got. You haven't been casting anything, so it's probably three Venge Vines. Show me what you got.
likely what my follow up is, unless I discard something malicious towards me, is Liliana get rid of the Stitcher supplier. So that way, Gravecrawler is the only thing left on the table with no other zombies to allow them to cast. And then holding up Assassin's Trophy in the future should stop anything hasty from coming down. Yeah, look at that. So opponent can put us to five here, and if they find a way to get that Vengevine into play, we can potentially go down to one. So if they just top deck a land, they had three lands coming. Ooh boy. Yep, that's fine. If opponent attacks me directly, likely rebind Siege Rhino. If not, kill the Gravecrawler. Ooh. Oh, I don't want to discard the Vengevine. Um... Okay, well, let's do that. And that. But we're not going to plus it. Actually, yes, we are, because opponent won't have two cards. I guess if they draw a zombie, this is bad. And if they do, we'll sack the Nurturing Pete land and see if we get a Fatal Push. Land drop. Do it. I want to see a land. I want to get rewarded for my play. Stitcher Supplier would be the worst. Stitcher Supplier into two Vengevines. Don't do that. Land! We did it right, you guys. We did it! Alright. Let's go ahead and sack the Peatland. Ooh, Stoneforge. That's a good draw. Hmm. Buyback Seed Rhino is our safest play, so let's go ahead and do it. And the saddest Liliana the Vel that's literally not going to do anything this game. Uh, this puts opponent to five. Yep. All right, so zombie thing, surgical extraction comes in, Vel of Summer comes in. We get eh, Collective Brutality's weak. Maelstrom Pulse could be situational. This is not a grind fest. Batter Skull is going to be fantastic because they're an aggro deck. Lingering Souls can chump block, but I'm not 100% sure of their value. The Sword of Fire Nice is super awkward. It's only good if we see the Lingering Souls, so I'm going to put this in a consideration pile. Goyf should be bigger than their threat. Scooze is fantastic in this matchup. Grim Flayer might actually be awkward. Uh, Plague Engineer just seems fantastic. We call zombies on the game's over. Any of the removal. Fatal Push is a little bit on the weaker side, but it can also grab their utility creatures that don't come back. Yeah, I'm not ecstatic about this package, and this is a temporary removal spell, so it'd probably be between this and Grim Flare. I think I'd prefer to have the removal. Yeah, we can submit it like that. Alright. We have Vel of Summer, which is just slightly on the slow end. We have a Path, some removal, a Stone Forge. I like these cards. Unfortunately, this likely means Shambling Vents on one. The Shambling Vents on one will allow us to discard and protect ourselves or just exile if there's a problem. I'm assuming that this is similar to the old Vengevine decks that end up running Walking Ballista and Hangerback Walker as free sack effects. The Orzhov Zombies list I ran a while back was actually quite strong, and it just worked on the synergy between Carrion Feeder, Gravecrawler, and the Undead Vizier. Yep, and Crypt Breaker. But this isn't very strong on its own, and that's a skew, so... Opponent, you get it this turn. Hopefully they just make the two drop that when a creature dies, they draw a card, and then I can double removal spell. I mean, that's my best line. Hmm. 
Okay, so they're going to discard to make a creature. So they're probably going to be discarding a Vengevine here. I can Stone Forge, but that likely means I'll be getting hit in the face by a Vengevine. Alternatively, I leave up Path in case they have a Nut Draw. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is Thoughtseize. So I've opted into the fact that I can potentially leave up Path for Vengevine and also just disrupt what opponent's doing. I'm assuming they don't have a very good start because of how this Crypt Breaker is getting set up. Bloodgast Angler Stitcher Supplier. Huh. That was not what I was expecting at all. So... This fuels their graveyard, seeing as how I only have Surgicals and I don't have one at the moment. This is probably their strongest card. They will discard the Blood Gas, get it back, I path it, and then they have Assassin's Trophy for whatever I leave up. Alternatively, I just push this and let them have the Blood Gas for a turn. Yeah, that's the plan. This is also a vampire, not a zombie, so it doesn't help their strategy a ton, but it is a way to sack creatures and get value. So I need a green-black source here. Overgrown Tomb. We push you. All right, opponent. Let the push resolve. Pushy, pushy. Wait, why didn't you get your zombie yet? Did I click on Bloodgast? I'm an idiot. All right, whatever. You have a 2-2. Two -two. I have a Scooz. We'll work this out one way or another. At least I don't have the sack outlet for the Stitcher Supplier yet. This Vell of Summer would have been decent versus the Assassin's Trophy, which is the primary reason I didn't consider taking it. I don't know why I took the Bloodgast. I was talking about them discarding it to the Crypt Breaker, and I must have just flooded my mind with the thought of it's going to end up in the yard. All right, well, opponent should be playing Peatland, probably a two drop off the top in the Stitcher Supplier. Bloodgast won't have haste yet, but I will be going to 13. All right. Opponent, what did you find? Stitcher Supplier. Surprise, surprise. Discarding a Vengevine? That's bad. And a Gravecrawler. Yikes. If I would have properly discarded the Stitcher Supplier, this would be a non-game, even if I don't find another land. But instead, I'm taking some beats. Windswept Heath. So, I need to get a Forest so I can scooze and activate, and I need to get... have the path open for the Vengevine. So... Bad stuff is happening. Leaving the white up here is a huge tell, just because I would grow the scoos if I could. So let's path, but I think I'm dead. Five, six, seven, I go to one. Sorry, two, because I'm blocking the Stitcher Supplier. Milled over a Crypt Breaker and some lands. Overall, not that bad, although they just found a draw engine. And they have a Gurmag. So I can make this a 4-4, four, four, gain 2 life. Even the creatures was nice.
Goif, Goif, Goif. So we currently are accounting for creature, sorcery, instant land. So I can Goif, eat something, block. I gain three life, but I'll be taking lethal. All right, well. Yay for trying to describe lines and dying to it. So... That was a really good top deck from opponent two. The Stitcher Supplier hitting exactly Vengevine was the only reason that became a game. We'll just run it back. Hopefully click on the correct things this time around. I still don't think much of this is relevant. The Lingering Souls can chump block for a while and trade with their smaller zombies, but this is just a temporary thing, and if we're making it to turn three, we're likely to win anyway. Plague Engineer would have just ended the game there. Surgical would have done a decent job, but shouldn't have needed it. All right. Play should also help a ton. Oh, look at that. We have Graveyard Hate, Graveyard Hate, Graveyard Hate, and a Liliana. We have no immediate interaction, but opponent won't be able to explode very hard if I keep their graveyard clear, so this is probably fine. This is also a very, very sexy poker hand. I guess it's only two pair, but they're it's a good two pair. So this is likely getting me a temple garden. This is getting me an overgrown tomb, so I have double green for the skews. Surgical and skews is a little bit of a non bow though. Opponent is currently at six cards. The Orzhov version of the deck was very powerful. Like it, it did some really strong things. But Hogak was around, and so we didn't make much progress on it. As long as we're waiting for opponent, it was basically Crypt Breaker so that you could tap three zombies and draw a card. Grave Crawler to just perpetually cast something from the yard for one mana. Undead Augur let you draw a card whenever a creature died. Tide Hollow Sculler was just a value card, and because it's double trigger, if you sacked it with the trigger on, it'd permanently exile. Carrion Feeder is a sack outlet, stitch your supplier for the yard. Giralf's Messenger went infinite with Yogmoth, and then Unearth Inquisition just to power suite of cards that did powerful things. Um, all right, here you go, opponent. Show me some zombies. Cryptbreaker. Not the most busted start that you can get, but he is a discard outlet. So this is going to get a overgrown tomb. <laughs> All right, I want to draw a land. Um... Okay, uh, I know this said this was going to get a Temple Garden, but because I have three cards with double black, I'm going to go for the Overgrown Tomb. And we can leave up the Scoos. If opponent tries to activate Crypt Breaker, then we can just Surgical. Top decking a land means Last Hope comes down, just starts eating their entire board. I'd also love it if they just discarded Vengevine because it's a power play, but I'd love to see what's in their hand. See how many angles I have to try to defend from. Alright, opponent found a land. And that's all they're showing me they found. Vell of Summer is actually fairly strong. So I cannot attack with Scoos, otherwise I'll make a 2-2 zombie, and if it's not a creature, I can't do anything about it. 
So I'm just going to sit on defense and try to control what opponent's doing and also just try to draw my third land. Like, even basic planes would be acceptable at this point. Fatal Push. That is an awesome chance for Vel of Summer. Draw a card if your opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered. You and permanents you control gain Hexproof. So now they don't get a zombie, I get to draw a card, and my Skuz lives. Unless they have another Fatal Push. They do not. Land? Show me a land! Or honestly, Fatal Push. Both are acceptable. Okay. Hexproof from blue and black. This was a very powerful magic card. I understand that it's situational, but the power level is well beyond one mana. The fact that opponent got a tap land there means they didn't have another fatal push in hand. So there wasn't very much incentive to actually try to surgical that. All right, that is a discard outlet. And I do want to keep opponent's graveyard under control for Gurmag Angler. They're not going to use an off-color fetch. So not surgically in that. Godless Shrine. Oh, I don't want to take the shock for that. So this reads, discard a creature card, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, Lily the Last Hope can eat any of these, assuming they don't have a creature in hand. My considerations are Surgical the Fatal Push, check for a creature, and then eat Lotleth Troll. Or just Lily, eat the Crypt Breaker, expect Lily to die on the backswing to the Lotleth Troll. I don't really want to just surg fire off a Surgical for no value here. I don't mind Lily of the Veil plussing, but I think Last Hope is my best clock. So if opponent discards a creature card, I can Surgical. Last Hope dies, I'm sad, but we're going to win because Skews can eat them. Or if they're important, I can just Surgical them out of the deck. I have a white source here, so I'm just going to get my basic forest, try to keep my life total high. Last Hope gets to come down. We'll eat a Crypt Breaker. They're likely going to tap down to draw a card. Yeah, the odds of them having one creature card out of three is just too high. And I don't like Surgical for no information, especially when they get a draw card. Worst case scenario is a top deck of Fatal Push, kill the Scoos, and kill Lily. But we still have cards. We still, we still do things. And then the Scoos keeps back the Crypt Breaker in case they only have one creature for the Lotleth Troll. Man, I'd kill for a Plague Engineer. That card would do work. And I did not fire off the Surgical at their draw step because I want to try to eat this with Scoos. The cards I'm intending to Surgical are Gravecrawler, Vengevine, and potentially... I don't know. Undead Augur could be a consideration because it's so much fuel for their deck. Bloodgast would probably be the next highest priority. Opponent's trying to piece it together. We are a couple attacks away from Blood Gas being hasty. Yep, as expected.
There could have been some thought from opponent if they have the Venge Vine to try to activate them, give them haste because it is four power and could also swing it. Liliana, like discard two Venge Vines would actually be able to do a lot of damage on this table if we weren't holding surgical extractions. They did have a Venge Vine. They do have another Venge Vine. Lily goes down. Still not seen a Fatal Push yet, though. Rotting Regisaur. All right. Not giving them an opportunity to cast a second creature. Just getting rid of these guys. And on Magic Online, you always have to make sure you eat the ones in the graveyard. Kind of easy to miss sometimes. Ah, I should have taken a screenshot of the deck. Oh well, I have a second surgical. Blooming Marsh. That's sad. Uh, opponent has no cards left in hand. Likely going to get hit for seven here. I think I'm going to try to use Lily to bait out a attack from the Rotting Regisaur. Or potentially the Lotlet Troll since it has Trample. Uh, could have been an argument there to shock in the Godless Shrine to eat one of the creatures. But there's not a ton of fuel in the yard at the moment. So I don't see much value in that. Ooh, uh, opponent has no cards left in hand. If they had potentially two cards to discard, they could actually kill me with the Lotlet Troll and the Regisar. But Scoos will grow pretty quickly. Although we have not seen another creature yet. Yep, just going after me. So, highly doubt they have Bump in the Night. They can make this 12. Interesting time restrictions with the Rotting Register. They make you discard at your upkeep, so the Canopy Land doesn't actually do a whole lot. I don't know. Push would be fantastic. I just push Lily, clear their board. Although, I probably want to spend a turn eating things. I don't know. This goose hasn't done much. If he's not attacking or blocking, he's not really doing much. A Stitcher Supplier. Hasty Blood Gas would be a problem, but didn't find anything. And that's also a good Edict target. My Siege Rhino is going to be a chump blocker this turn. That's so sad and depressing. I have to eat this so I can shock this into play so I can drain for three. And then that's putting me on chump blocking the Registar and killing the Lotleth Troll. Alternatively, I just eat three things and can't do anything about the Rotting Regisar. Opponent has no cards in hand, but a Nurturing Peatland. So this enters, I drain, I block there, jump here. Opponent has a Stitcher Supplier, I have an active Lily and a Surgical. Whatever, we came here to cast Siege Rhinos. I actually don't think I want to plus this Lily. If I plus this Lily, I'm discarding the other one, which means my Edict is bad, but my Edict's already bad. I can discard the Surgical, but that puts me weak to Bloodgast. Opponent has no cards in hand and an active Regisar. Yeah, Lily can just sit.
Is it so much to ask for some recursible value? Okay, so block there. They can regenerate it though. Block here so I don't die. Yep, they top deck the Stitcher supplier. Windswept teeth. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is game three, so it's likely not going to matter, but let's go ahead and blow this up, take a look at the deck. Blood Gas, Carrion Feeders, Crypt Breakers, Urborg, Mutavault, Last Hope. Yeah, just in case it isn't. I think it is, though. We take all those guys and then let ourselves out. Yep. GG's opponent. I feel like we got a little unlucky with the draws, maybe keeping the poker hand was not correct we ended up dying with two of our cards from our starting hand in it because they just never became relevant but let's try to take the three two this is th these are the hands i dream about turn one can be removal if it's a mana dork discard if it's not turn two stone forge mystic and a lily of the bell to back it up All right, another Stitcher Supplier deck. Finding Dredge. All right, then. So I have to look for a Cathartic Reunion. Yeah, sure. Godless Shrine is fine. I don't care about the green mana yet. Okay, so apparently this is what all the Hogak people have been switching to. So, Carrion Feeders, the best recursible value. Don't want to put Vengevine in the yard for them. Thank you for the follow. Having a little fun with Stoneforge this week. Uh, this is along the lines of the most competitive deck that I play, but we'll get back to some fun stuff next week. Probably with Stoneforge Mystic. I'm sure Sunday will probably be Squirrel Blade. That should probably be a fun one opponent got rid of the stitcher supplier with their own dark blast all right i like that opponent that's some spice opponent ran out their thingy there um i'm kind of looking for basics creeping chill is bad and opponent is definitely on the vengevine plan so let's just get all three of our colors we can slam stone forge here we're just gonna go get batter skull so that we don't get cheesed out by creeping chill then next turn, leave up a fetch land for Fatal Push and Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, I love Legacy. I haven't played it much lately, but Legacy is the format where I feel like there's the most interaction. Modern since the Hogak ban is getting significantly better, but love me some Brainstorm. Absolutely love it. Uh, I've played Grixis Control, Nick Fit, Miracles. Uh, I've played Elves once. Elves wasn't necessarily a good deck for me, and Plague Engineer kind of ruined it, but Legacy is a very fun format. <laughs> All right, can fly great for three. And I can stop paying attention over here. So they have two Venge Vines, a prized amalgam. But no action. They get a dredge five. Yeah, if you've got the red and sixes, you're going to have a blast in Legacy. Uh, leaving up the fatal push. I don't know how much good it will do. If opponent gets to do anything, they're going to just slam me with two Venge Vines and get back two prized amalgams. They dredged into a grave crawler. Stinkweed Imp. Okay, I actually don't like this Death Touch, and they have another Stinkweed Imp to dredge, so let's go ahead and just take care of that. Actually, no, I'm going to Liliana, so I don't need to care about it yet. So, Overgrown Tomb tapped. Hmm. 
that may have been a mistake because I want a plus here discarding a planeswalker or a actually if I just put an instant in the bin then I have sorcery land creature instant yeah I'm gonna have to use the fatal push I should have actually checked that before that that was some bad tapping on my part so cast targeting that Grim Flare grows to be a 4-4. Four, four. We get a hit opponent and sculpt our yard a bit. That's horrible. That is actually fine, but I want to draw the land. Next turn can be Batter Skull and then and then Siege Rhino Grim Flare. Or no, what I do here is I put the Verdant Catacombs on top, Siege Rhino on the tip top. Then I run out this Grim Flare that's a 4-4. Four, four. Next turn, I get to cast the Siege Rhino to drain them for the last three. Oh, that's slightly weak to them just casting the Stinkweed Imp again, though. Maybe that was a mistake. Gravecrawler can't block. Opponent said misclick. Oh uh, yeah, they would have had the Venge Vines coming in. Uh, I don't want to tell them I had lethal incoming, but taking this line does leave them dead on board, so it's not like it matters. Oh, wait, these can't block. Yeah, these can block. So they actually may have lived because of this misplay, so... Yep. All right, path is okay, but I'm only going to be able to draw one card here, and I think I want it to be the Verdant Catacomb so I can cast the Batter Skull. So let's go ahead and put that into the yard. I'll have the opportunity to shuffle. Uh, it's going to go. It's going to get shuffled back into the deck anyway, so I may as well put it into the yard. Put Verdant Catacombs on top. Second trigger, Lingering Souls. Put into the yard. Put into the yard because that's going to go get me my last basic swamp. I just told opponent that would have been lethal if they didn't misclick, so they can't feel that bad about it. If they can reanimate these Venge Vines, which means they have to have a sack outlet, they will probably kill me here, because that's going to be 14, 16, 18 damage. Yeah, they have the second Grave Crawler. A lot of creatures here. A lot of creatures. All right, so leaving back the prized amalgams because they've, oh, I guess not. So taking 12, 18. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just dead now. But we'll let Moto do the math. Yep, super dead. If opponent didn't misclick, we would have had that. Okay, Surgical Extraction. You get to make a heroic return. Veil of Summer could be a consideration. They didn't show us Creeping Chill, though. They show, showed us Conflagrate. So that's probably not as relevant. Uh, I don't think anything else is relevant. Yeah, uh... Kind of wasn't expecting to face two Vengevine decks tonight, or I would have had some number of Ley Lines in the side. This was here more for Tron, and we did beat Tron, so can't complain that hard. Uh, the Evasion's good. Plague Engineer's good for the zombies. 
Scoos just eats their yard. The Assassin's Trophies are kind of awkward. It's probably just going to be a trim of that. These are temporary removal, and it also ramps them. So Surgical for Trophy, and we can call it there. Didn't see any discard out of them, so not stoked on the Vel of Summer. Uh, I don't want to discard anything in their hand, but this is going to be a Batter Skull, and we haven't done Batter Skull a whole lot, so why not? This is not a hand you keep if you want to win. This is a hand you keep if you want to have fun. I love having fun on my stream. I will always take the fun play over the competitive one. And because opponent's deck does explode pretty hard, I'm just going to get a basic here. We have a bit of fixing in our hand, so we also have a thought seize. Cathartic Reunion, Carrion Feeder. So... Carrion feeders so that they don't have a turn one play. Next turn will be a Thought Seize and a Tap Land. Okay, did not draw one drop. Lily's pretty good, but uh, not going to let them Cathartic Reunion. All right, well, we've slowed him down. That's about the best we could hope for. The Stinkweed coming out? Actually, opponent has Assassin's Trophy. So they ran out the forest instead of a tapped Overgrown Tomb, and they're currently representing Green Black. So I am 100% expecting opponent to have Assassin's Trophy. Given that information, probably going to start on Stoneforge Mystic. And hmm. Liliana Plus is just going to fuel what they're doing. I prefer Liliana get trophied. This is tough. So Stoneforge Mystic, if I'm not expecting to cheese in Batter Skull, probably has to get sort of Fire and Ice. Then that means they just Trophy Stoneforge Mystic and I'm ramped up to Cassian next turn. Yeah, that's actually fine. So yeah, tap land. Let's just watch your life total. Stoneforge Mystic. Then this means Batter Skull either way. I found a Neonate. All right, so they do the trick where they discard the Dredger and then draw from the Dredger. Oh, I shouldn't have cleared that. I knew they had it. Did not represent the Assassin's Trophy that time around. They do have Gravecrawler, though. All right. We're going to have a Batter Skull, and they're going to have a Death Toucher. Think we didn't. Okay, well, since this is their engine and they haven't found another dredger yet, we're pathing it. And then we're going to activate the Stoneforge Mystic, put in our fun little batter skull. And that's enough for opponent concede. Well, we pieced apart their game plan. I think that's about the best we can ask for. So they did not have any discard or anything of merit. So I think that means we just run it back. Let's see. This is Blooming Marsh Thought Seas into Swamp Termagoy, Field of Ruin Path, and then hopefully play a Seed Drino. Uh, huh. I guess this takes a cathartic reunion. That's probably good enough reason. I could also see trying to mull for surgical, but only having two pieces of graveyard hate. I'm not stoked to throw away a hand with a very nice curve to try to find one piece of interaction. Insolent Neonate could start dredging. Opponent has a carrion feeder, a cathartic reunion. All right. Well, we're doing what we can. They didn't have a Dredger yet. The Carrion Feeder might have been the correct play, but we have a path, so. Oh, 
opponent did find a stinkweed off their draw. Found two prized amalgams, a blood gas, and a grave crawler. Oh boy, I don't think we're coming back from that. Goyf can at least block the prized amalgam for now. Likely going to have to path the blood gas because it's the easiest creature to get back. Although they have a grave crawler and a carrion feeder and a venge vine. Yeah. I'm glad that they banned Hogok, but I was an advocate of banning Vengevine because that just doesn't seem fair. I mean, we're still in a format where you have 4, 8, 14 power on the table this turn, and I don't even have Path Mana up. So I get to run out the Goyf. I can block one of the prized amalgams. I'm taking 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I go down to 3, and that's assuming that they don't have a Conflagrate. Yep. Thought these didn't help, but I didn't take any damage from my mana base. Okay, opponent didn't find anything of value there. They do get to recast the Gravecrawler, though. They also have another Neonate coming down. That actually saves about as much damage as it would have as a blocker. In fact, I think it saves one more. And then that means I get a Siege Rhino. Uh, they get a Sack the Venge Vine, though. Uh, not a huge fan of this. Carrion Feeder gives them options to do shenanigan things. So, do I actually want to take the 13 here? If I take the 13, well, 12, because I'm going to path the Carrion Feeder. Then I Siege Rhino, I go up to 5, I can block a single creature and die. So I've got to hope that they can't bring back Vengevine next turn with a Prized Amalgam in hand. Oh, they just let it go. They might have another Vengevine in hand. Siege Rhino! Go up to eight. I'm still looking at taking six. Assuming they don't get this Vengevine back. Which they have a zombie. Yep. GG's opponent. I'm not doing anything about that. They're going to cast the Gravecrawler, sack it, cast the Gravecrawler, and then we're out. Uh, if opponent miss, didn't misclick in game one, we actually would have been able to just win on game two by disrupting them. Yeah, he did go off. But... Overall, Abzan Blade, not too bad. Uh, we are running into a problem right now in the format with Hogak Band that everybody is trying to play fair decks that attrition out, except for those last two Vengevine players. I actually hadn't seen that deck before tonight, but format's pretty new since bannings. Um, but decks like Jund are actually getting beat out by Mardu Pyromancer, where they're just drawing additional cards every turn. We ended up losing versus Blue-White because Jace just kept brainstorming. Uh, there's a lot of fair card advantage going on, where if your deck's not doing that, you're not going to win. Just discarding your opponent and putting out a threat isn't going to get you there. And that was always kind of the problem with Abzan, is a Lingering Souls wasn't a strong enough finish before your opponents comboed you off. Uh, and changing Faithless Looting and Hogak didn't necessarily fix that. Stoneforge helps a little bit, but Batter Skull just isn't strong enough, and partially because everybody's trying to jam it right meow, there's not a whole lot of value for just sticking your Stoneforge Mystic. But deck's still fun. Stoneforge is still a fun card. I absolutely enjoy playing it. Um, this shell probably isn't correct. Siege Rhino's still a fun card. I it would have cheesed a couple of wins out, but that's about all I've got going for it. Uh, I have been playing a little bit more competitive decks with Stoneforge this week. Uh, so we're going to go back to fun stuff next week. I know Squirrel Blade is going to be coming up at some point next week. Don't know exactly when, but I am 13. I do a bunch of fun decks for Squirrel Dealer. You can see my schedule over there on the left. Brad Wan also streams on Tuesday and Thursday. I believe he's playing a shell for taxes tomorrow night. Uh, we do a lot of content, though. We've been around for about seven months now. All that is historically up on YouTube. Just search for Squirrel Dealer. You'll see all of our stuff. If you have a fun deck idea or fun interaction, send it to Dex at Squirrel Dealer. If it's cool, I'll try to build a deck and showcase it. If not, I'll be happy to respond to it and let you know what I think. 
if you do like our content, we are hosting all of our content off of Squirrel Dealer staff. So we will always be hosting if somebody's live. And if you'd like to reach out to me directly, feel free to hit me up on Reddit. But we do a bunch of fun stuff. And I, I, again, I touch competitive this week because of Stoneforge. And we'll get back to fun stuff. And thanks for sticking around, you guys. Uh, had a lot of fun tonight. And I will talk to you all later.